Hello friends, in today's video we'll be looking at swipe view in Xamarin forms and we have this prototype that we're going to follow as you can see you can swipe to reveal the menu and when you click on the menu item swipe back to close the swipe view you can reveal the menu click and close again and looking at our final result here also you can click and we have a menu and you click we have the menu closed all right if this is your first time here on this channel we are committed to show you how to design good looking mobile applications and we also discuss strategies to becoming a better mobile app developer so if that interests you i want you to click on that subscribe button now and click on the notification icon so that when i upload new content like this you'll be the first to be notified so guys i just launched a Xamarin forms coaching master class this masterclass is going to help you to take your Xamarin Forms development to the next level. We only have 25 slots available and it's going to be on a first come first serve basis. So if you are interested, use the link in the description below to register now and make sure that your registration is complete. This is going to be very interactive, it's not just another course out there. If you are interested, register now. So I have just 2019 here and what I have done uh, is to uh, create a new project called uh, Swipe Menu and also I've updated Xamarin Forms to the latest version 4.6 and uh, also I've installed a plugin called Pancake View as we'll be needing that and lastly I've uh, decided to import the assets that we're going to be using in this project alright so let's get started well, before we continue, I wanted to let you know that uh, Swipe View is currently still in experimental, so that you will not forget. I want us to, I want to, want us to set uh, the experimental flag. So there are several ways to do that. You can go to your main, to your uh, different projects uh, like the main activity app delegate to set it, or you can set it once in your address app.xaml.cs right here. So just right before here, you can set. Uh, device dot set flag and uh, passing an array of all the uh, all the experimental uh, uh, controls that you want to use. So, like here we have the swap view experimental. So if you if you are using um, say expander two, you can just put a comma and add uh, the expander underscore experimental right here. So with this method, you can just set it once and uh, you know in case you forget to set it in different projects all right so now that we have this let's start to design our page so we have the main page here and um, I'm gonna remove this as I'm going to be using a grid I'm gonna put grid here and um, in this grid uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, we want to Add an image. We want the image to have as our background. So we have image. We set the aspect fill. Uh, the aspect to aspect fill, and uh, we set the source to BG. All right. So what we want to do? Let me set some other properties of this grid to fill and expand. Though I think by default it should fill and expand, but let's just have it here. All right. So what the next thing I I need. Let me save this and I'll create. Let me launch this so that we can follow along. Okay, so like we see now, we have our image. This image I want to use as a background. And what I want to do next is I want to add a box view to serve as an overlay so that it can give us something like a uh, transparent effect. So I have this box view. I set this color to this uh, color X code. And the opacity to uh, 90 percent so i'm going to save this Let's see all right so we have this faded uh background uh, that is how we want our background to be anytime we swipe uh this is what, what we want it to reveal all right so the next thing is right still inside the grid i now want to use add the swipe view um swipe view now i have this swipe view and um, I have this swipe view and I'm going to give it a name and uh, 
I want to be sure that the background color is also transparent because I don't want it to have any color. All right. If you look at our prototype, you see that we have this view, and if you look on uh, this view, we can divide it into one, two, three, four, into four different rows. Uh, and uh, each row, the first row will contain this uh, menu icon and the profile picture. The second row will contain this uh, two label stack together. The third row will contain these two pancake view stack together. And the last row will contain uh, this uh, task area. All right, so what I need to do is to, uh, so and looking at this, you see that by the time we have this swiped, you see that we have this rounded corner. So, um, of course, I'm going to start with a grid. But inside that grid, I'm not going to have a pancake beam. So, let's see. So, right inside here, inside this, uh, I'm going to have a grid. I'll give it a name. And uh, right inside this grid, I'm going to have a pancake beam. It, uh, so that I will to make use of uh, the rounded uh, corner property of this pancake view. I'm going to resolve this namespace. All right. So right inside this pancake view, now we can now have our grid that wants to divide into four put into four rows. So we have a grid with four row dimensions. So in the first row, we want our menu and we want the profile picture so yeah i'm going to make use of a grid for that also and uh, i'm not going to divide the grid uh, i'm going to have this image to be on the uh on the left side so that's why it's, it's uh setting it to start and this image profile image is going to be at the end so it's going to be on a single line but they, they will both be on uh, two different ends of the grid. So this will be at the left side, this will be on the right side. All right, so and we are setting the tab gesture of this uh, image because this is our menu image. And that when every time we tap, or tap on it, we want to open uh, the swipe. So let's just uh, create this so I will not forget. All right, so that is for our first row. Now the second row, don't mind these lines because I'm using the uh, auth reload. That's why this is uh, working like this. So, but saving this, you can see that we already have the menu and we have the um, the profile picture. All right. So, uh, the next row is uh, the the greeting and uh, the question asking what do you want to do today. So we have this stack layout saying hello Ludai, what would you like to do today and we have some properties for it so this is going into the second row as you can see i'm going to save and we have it right here all right so in the in the um in the third row i'm also, I'm also going to use a stack layout in the third row and um, in this stack layout I want to make it of a pancake view to create uh, this the line that we have uh, for each task asking what do you want to do. So I have this pancake view. Let me let me reveal some of these other properties. All right, so we have a pancake view right here uh, with a corner radius of 20 on uh, at the top left corner and 20 at the top. Uh, lower corner of the pancake view and we have this color for it and right inside the pancake view we have a stack layout in that stack layout we now have an image and we have a text i'm going to save this to see what we have right here so you can see our pancake view is what is giving this uh, rounded corner at this end so we have 20 20 and inside we have our stack layout with image and the label so looking at our design you know that we we have three of these so and they follow the same uh design pattern so i'm going to bring those other two and uh what is, i'm going to bring inside the stack i have to be inside the stack 
layout outside this pancake view all right outside this pancake view we have other pancake views all right so let me save and there we have it so we have the two other um, uh, tasks that you can do for a day all right so in, in the last um in the last row as you can see let's go back to our design the last row we have this and we have uh, we have my task so what I'm, what I'm going to do here is I will, I will use make use of a stack layout so to stack this vertically and inside the stack okay so inside the stack layout I'm going to have this label I'm going to have a grid the grid will be divided into two columns and inside each of the columns I'm going to have a pancake view the pancake view uh, will now contain a grid the grid um will be divided into two rows the first row and the second row so the first row is going to have a stack layout to put this icon and this uh text the second row will contain this figure all right so uh let's start with the stack layout so let's see so right after here in the in the fourth row so we have this grid and the grid we like like i explained we have a label called my task and in this uh in this the, the, the next item in the stack layout is a grid and that grid we are going to divide it into two columns just like you see in a in our design so we're going to have two columns so um, right inside this grid let's create the first pancake view so i'm going to show you what i did uh, done here now okay so in this in the in the first row we have a pancake view that has a padding and has a corner radius of 15 and inside that pancake view we have a grid the grid is set to two rows the first row is going to take, take a stack layout with this icon and this uh, text and the uh, second row is going to take um, the figure for the completed task so let me save and see what we have so as you can see this is what we have here this is the pancake view with the corner radius inside we have a grid divided into two, into two rows the first row the second row and the first row has a stack layout that contains this icon and this label and the second row contains this all right so the other pancake views will go into the second column into the second column of the grid of the of the parent grid so i have the pancake view right inside i'm gonna save follow the same pattern so right we have it here so if you see if we if we swipe i'm trying to swipe now we can't see anything currently we can't see anything because uh there is no item to swipe all right so let's go ahead and and uh declare the the item i want to i want to swipe it you want to swipe to the right or to the left in order to have a swipe view you have to declare some uh item for left right top and bottom so if you want just only the left side you're going to declare just the left if you want for both left and right you do for both left and right if you want to do for all the four corners then you can do for the four so in this case we're just going to do for the left so in our swipe view right up here before we start to talk about the content i'm going to do swipe view dot left and inside here we're going to have uh, a collection of swipe items so if you want to do it you can individually start to say uh, swipe item and you know you give it the property you can have different uh, but but that is not what we are going to use in this case we are going to make use of uh, a swipe item view there is swipe item view so we want our own custom view so swipe item view 
and in this swipe item view what we are going to add there we're going to start with a grid um and i'm starting with a grid because i needed something i needed the, the appearance uh, container to fill the whole space so let's um if we save this i will try to swipe as you can see we now have a little swipe functionality as you can see but uh, we don't have items there yet all right so uh right here i'm going to have a grid so the grid is going to fill the whole space and inside this grid i'm going to make use of a stack layout and uh in the stack layout i'm going to make use of the bindable property to populate a list of menu it's something that uh, we have done before if you have Check some of my tutorial videos. You have, you have seen how I've made use of a stack layout. So let me just explain. Um, let me bring it out here. So we have trying to bring all this uh, all these properties out. Okay, so right here we we have a stack. We have a stack layout and the stack layout we are using the bindable uh, layout uh, dot item source to populate the the children of the stack layout and here we are making use of the bindable layout dot items template to create the kind of template that you want uh, in the layout so let me show you in our design so right here this is what we're trying to do so we need we are using make use of a pancake view to create this rounded corner and inside the pancake view, we're going to have an icon. So we are going to have a stack layout. If on the first side, we have a pancake view with an icon inside it. And on the and stack to it horizontally, we have this label. Okay. So we have, uh, this is the stack layout, but the children now contains uh, the items. So, so we have the stack layout, but the children now contains a pancake view on the left and start to it still uh, horizontal as you can see is a label that will take the name so we now have, we have a collection of icon and name that we're going to bind to this and this will be coming from this my menu this will be also be coming from code now i did something here this stack layout i made sure that it's uh it has a width request of 250 so that by the time we swipe you know we are swiping here and it, we are having like this is like 150 like 100 or so 100 uh pixel but we want it to move further than this so i'm setting this to 250 and um also set the padding and anytime we, you click on the the menu we want to close this swipe view so we have a tap gesture android air i would say it should close swipe so we're going to undo this uh later all right so let's go back to our xaml now if we save this now so as you can see our swipe is going further it's going further like this all right so uh the next thing we're going to do is to uh populate the item is to populate the item and um, let's see what we have so i'm going to stop this first because i want to work with code um so that's to be able to find to uh, view all right so the first thing we want to do is to make sure that we are setting the binding context of this page let's set it to itself because i want to bring the data from this page so and i'm going to need a property uh of menu so before that time i need to declare the class that's going to uh i'm going to use to build my object so i'm calling it menu so i have public class menu the name and icon just like you see in our design and after this i want to populate uh the menu 
So I'm creating a private method right here. Call it. I'm calling it uh, get menu, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm returning a list of menu as you can see with name and icon. All right. So the next thing is I need the property called my menu, and I'm going to bind to the view. So this is the property called my menu and the list of menu. And uh, lastly, for us to be able to see uh, before we, after initializing the component, want to set my menu to get the list of menu. All right. So let's save this and run and see what we have. Okay. So we have this. We swipe now. As you can see, we have the list of our menu. Now you can leave this uh, as it is. If you want to, if if this is how you want your uh, menu to be, it's fine. And this is um, as of now. This is the this is we, we, you you you're not going to face any issue implementing it like this. But going forward, there are something that uh, going forward. I want to show you how you can animate the view as you are expand as you are swiping and you are. As you open the swipe view and you close the swipe view, but there is a, a little caveat to this. Um, currently, there is there is no way to uh, to check if you are if you are swiping back. So you know if you swipe to the left, you can swipe back to the right. So uh, it will be difficult to know when the um, user is swiping back. So I've reached out to the folks at Microsoft and uh, we had a discussion and uh, I already got the promise that this will be looked into. So it may not be a problem um, at the end of the day. And I'm very sure by the time he, uh, he sees this, he will understand what I was trying to achieve. So let's. So if, you, if this is how you want it to be, you are good to go. But if you want to go ahead and animate uh, your view, it just like we have in our design here if you want to make it look exactly like this then follow along uh, i will show you the the, the little uh, downside to doing it right now until that issue is fixed all right so let's let's still let's close this because we are working with code so what we want to do in order to animate is we need to i want to create two methods uh the first one is to open animation and this is i'll show you what i am doing now to open the animation i'm calling the this swipe content and i'm scaling it to 0.9 so this is the, our content let me, let me show you this is our swipe content that is the, the main grid I'm setting it to this i'm scaling it to 0 0.9 at, at 300 milliseconds and after right after that i'm taking the pancake the the pancake uh, view itself. Let me show you that the, this is the parent pancake view inside it. I'm setting the corner radius to 20. Then I'll take the swipe view again and rotate it to minus 15. So that is what the open uh, so that is the open swipe animation. Then we need another one which is the close animation. Let me sh let me bring it right here. This is the close animation. So it's just the reverse of what we did here. So uh, starting from rotation again, so I'm rotating it back to zero and uh, taking the pancake view and putting it back to uh, zero, the corner radius back to zero and the scale taking it back to one. All right. So now, you know, we have this menu icon. So when we tap, if you open, open uh, the swipe view. So this is what we're going to do. So anytime we want to open a swipe view what we're just going to do is is to call the swipe view itself so let me let me show you so i gave the swipe view a name it's called main swipe view so the first thing we're going to do is to call the main swipe view and call the and take the open method in the open method you can indicate the item that you want to open is it the left item or the right item the bottom item or the top item then after we have opened this we now want to Call this animation want this animation to happen and the same way when you close when you close uh when you close the swipe what we want to do 
is to call the close method call the close method and also close call, call the close animation so let's save this and then see what we have okay so when we tap on this we can see we have our animation when we click on any of this item it feels black and we tap and when we click but now there's another thing to it you know when we you cannot just only tap and click sometimes the user will actually swipe but swiping now you can see the swiping is not the animation is not happening when we, when we are swiping it's just still the default all right so we want to use a different um events to undo that so for the swipe view we are going to make it use of we're going to be handling some of the events for the swipe view and the events that we're going to be handling uh, we have three events that we're going to undo we have the swipe started we have uh, swipe ended and close requested so for this swipe view so then, so we have swipe started swipe ended and close requested so let me see if we have any other events so, okay so, this, so we also have swipe changing for this swipe changing we can make use of it uh it, this would have been the best way to handle swiping left and right all right so for each of these events let's let's handle each of these events i'm not sure if i need all these three but let me see i think i need the three all right so yes i'll be needing the three so let's go to definition for each of this um, each of these events okay so when swipe is starting so that's when the user manually swipe we want to want to uh, call the open animation if if the if swipe ends this is what i want to do if swipe ends and the thing is not open before i handle this i want to i will show you something let me show you the location of all this so when the when close is requested uh we want this to close the, the animation to happen okay uh even though i think the animation is already happening before without uh without yeah the animation so, so we may not necessarily make use of this close requested because that has already been handled in this uh close swipe uh but well let's just see uh let me let me remove it i'm not sure we're going to be needing this all right so when we when swipe started I want the animation to happen i want to show you some things uh right here so that you know swipe okay close requested so i have to remove the close requested from here okay. so as you can see as i'm swiping you see that the animation is now working if i click this goes back so we don't actually need the close uh close the uh, close requested in this case so but this is what we're trying to achieve that when the user manually swipe the animation should also work all right well look at something uh we need to understand something if you try to swipe and you, didn't, you refuse to swipe to the end then you see that we, you have uh this issue so we want to undo it this way that's why we need the the swipe ended we want to check when the swipe ends uh, I want to check if the if the swipe view is open. So the is open is coming from the event ads. So we are checking if it's open. If it's not open, then you should you do the close animation. Don't forget that the close animation is going to you know rotate back and take this back to uh, where it's coming from. All right. So let's see now. 
So if I try to swipe and I'm not going, you see that it goes back. I try to swipe and I'm not going further, it goes back. All right. So the only um, the only caveat to this is uh, the only thing that's just remaining now is by the time you swipe and you decide to swipe back, this thing, this uh, view is not going to go back to normal and this is because for now you can't know we can't undo the swiping back there's nothing giving us uh, there's no event uh, reason when this when this is swiping back so uh, with this we can't undo the animation so this is the only drawback for this currently and like I said I've already discussed with uh, folks in Microsoft and um, I'm hoping that this will be looked into if an event can be can be exposed or if you can still use any of this event just like the uh, swipe starting so that we we'll know if the user is swiping back is closing this back then you can also now do this animation to rotate this back to as supposed to be that this is the only drawback for this design so if you if you cannot do this of course you can still make use of the normal swipe without the animation, the one that will just swipe from left to right without the animation that rotates at the view. Alright, before you go, in my last video on Friday, I made an announcement that I am starting a uh, an online Zamari coaching masterclass. And this in this masterclass, what we are going to be uh, doing is to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction a one on one uh, coaching session for uh, you to take your Xamarin Forms uh, development to the next level. And this coaching session is going to take just only 25 people. There's only a slot for just 25 people. And if you're interested in this coaching session, you can use the link in the description below to register. This is not just like uh, other uh, Xamarin course out there. Of course, we'll be making use of videos also, but we'll be having conversations, one on one conversations uh, to take your design and design development to the next level so if that interests you you can use the link in the description below to complete your registration it's only those people that have completed their registration that will be uh, that will be admitted so if you just register and your registration is not completed then um, if if another person should complete his or registration that the other person will be taking uh, over you so uh, do that and registration is also closing very soon so even if it's not up to up to uh, 25 in a week time registration will close so by next week monday registration is closing so if you want to register register now if we get 25 people the registration is closed and if uh, it lasted up to one week before before 25 people then by next week monday registration is going to close Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.